This is Tom Bernacki, and do you have a big knot on top of your foot? Look at this lump of bone right here. So a lot of times people press on this thing and they're like, hey, it's aching, it's radiating, it's numb, it's killing me during the day, my laces are pressing onto it, how do I get rid of this thing? That is not a knot on top of your foot, but there's a lot of causes of top of the foot pain. You have nerves, you have two major extensor tendons there that we're gonna talk about. You have bones, you have ligaments under there, and what happens is with abnormal pressure and irritation, it's usually one foot compared to the other gets really irritated, really sore, so all the muscles, all the tendons, and the bone gets so swollen, so irritated that it can feel like a big, thick knot. So what we're gonna do in this video, we're gonna go over how to diagnose it. When to see your podiatrist, the remedies, how to take care of it at home, stretches, exercises, massages, the best shoes, the best orthotics, the best braces, shockwave therapies, lasers, all this stuff, what works, how to take care of it, we're gonna go over it. But first, a quick favor from you. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We appreciate your likes, your subscribes, your comment. We really love hearing if this stuff helps. It really makes a big difference for us, so thank you. So take a look on top of your foot here. You have a couple common structures. You have the extensor tendons right here. So these tendons work by lifting your toes. And then you have the tibialis anterior tendon. So that one works on lifting your foot and turning your foot in and maintaining your arch can form a knot on top of your foot. And you have two nerves, the superficial perineal nerve and the deep perineal nerve. As laces and swollen tendons come across here, they get irritated and sore. And then you, to top it all off, you have bones underneath here. So you have your Liz Frank joint right here with your intercuneiform joints, which can get swollen and irritated. And from the bottom, those can get sore and push up on the tendons, creating a knot. And to top it all off, you can get a cyst. So joint fluid can herniate up. That's called a ganglion cyst. So because there's so much stuff and it's all got slightly different treatments, go see your podiatrist. That's always the disclaimer. Don't worry, we're gonna show you some stuff still, but that's always the disclaimer. Get evaluated by your podiatrist because it could be a fracture. It could be what's called a Liz Frank uh, fracture where you bent this joint and either injured the ligaments or the bone. And what happens is as your foot moves and bends, all that soft tissue and nerve can get irritated. So what we do is we do an X-ray and an ultrasound in the office to make sure nothing's damaged. And sometimes you have to get an MRI to make sure the ligament's not damaged and injured because these could be serious injuries taking place for you. So a lot of the times, if there's a tight calf and tight hamstring, the extensor tendons have to work harder and that makes the foot flatten out more. That could lead to a knot on top of your foot. So this is why this happens. So the real underlying cause to these problems is one tight foot compared to the other. So take a look right here. My right foot is more loose than my left foot. That's about a 10 degree difference. I'm gonna show that with an angle right here. And my left foot has to turn out. That makes those extensor tendons work harder. That makes the bones compress. That makes everything squish. That makes the joint fluid get compressed and herniate out from underneath. All that stuff contributes to create that knot and lump on top of the foot. I'm gonna show a demo later, but take a look here. This person's legs line up pretty equally. So they're not buckling out they're landing equally and you can see as this person's running it's not going to crush the top of the foot as much but take a look right here clearly less uh, soft tissue flexibility the calf muscles force the ankles to turn out he's just plodding along and landing because this is an older person with less flexibility that's going to have more top of the foot pain look at this this is a younger person but look at how much the ankles are buckling out this is called overpronation. with each step the foot is compressing the tendons have to work harder to lift the foot the nerves are getting squished by those bones it all adds up and what you want to do is there are pills there is icing there is massage that can reduce that knot so the key for pain relief is get some ice. So in this example, I use some ice bottles. It's your entire foot. If your plantar fascia is tight, then the top of the foot's gonna be tight. If your calf muscle's tight, then the top of the foot's gonna be tight most likely. So a frozen ice bottle or frozen ice ball, you can use on your foot, your ankle, your calf, 
loosen all that up. Same thing with massage balls. These are like a dollar. You can get them at a dollar store. Just put your body weight onto it. It shouldn't hurt. You don't have to create pain. Just gently massage until it loosens up over a minute or two. That will take pressure off the top of the foot. So same thing with a massage roller stick. This is one of my favorites, $7 online. I see it right now as I'm checking. Loosen up your calf muscles. That's going to jam the top of your foot less, especially if you have a high arched foot, especially if you're standing all day and your calf muscles are spasming. Loosen all that soft tissue up. It will help the top of your foot. I'm a big fan of one or two minutes of massaging and loosening up and then one to two minutes of stretching every morning. So get a towel. If you can't reach your toes, if you can reach your toes, just touch your toes. If you can use gravity, use gravity to just lean down onto your toes and touch them that way. But that's how you loosen up. A couple minutes a day will make a huge difference. And creams and lotions can really help. I'm a big fan of BioFreeze. That can help with nerve pain and soreness. You don't have to go too crazy, but the creams combined with other stuff can really help. Anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen or Aleve, these can really help these can get the swelling down it can get some pain relief but don't rely on just pills because you're going to keep doing the same thing that causes damage while you're taking pills that have side effects to try and reduce the swelling it's not a winning plan long term so take a look right here from the side view when your arch is formed when it collapses all that bone jams on top as that bone jams take a look at that motion right there as that middle of the foot jams that's called dorsal compression that can herniate the fluid up the bones are jamming against each other the tendons have to work harder to lift the toes because you're starting from a bad angle so that's called a biomechanical disadvantage and what happens is everything all at once gets sore and can form a big knot on top of your foot so how do you help that you don't want shoes that collapse see that this shoe would not give it any support one of my favorite shoes is kind of like an 8 to 12 millimeter lift here it doesn't have to be a specific brand but well made, nice stiff heel, doesn't really bend. These are called Mizunos, I love these. It's a great brand as well, but there's other good brands. Brooks are good, Asics, New Balance. Check my favorites down below. If that's not helping, look it, you can go up to maximalist shoes. So look at the difference here. This has cushion and it has a rocker bottom. So the foot doesn't flatten out. And what happens is this minimalist, minimalist shoe has to bend. Whereas this one has that heel lift, has a roll, has cushion, it has everything you could want. But then, should you go minimalist shoe or should you go really supportive shoe? If you're having a lot of pain, the evidence is pretty clear, go with some support until that pain goes away. If you're already feeling good, that's when you start cross training and strengthening those muscles. If you're a young, healthy guy who's surfing and on the beach and running 100 miles a week, maybe you can get away with it because you're not in a lot of pain. But most of people with foot pain need relief first before they can start getting better. It's kind of like if you break your ankle, that's not the time to go to the gym to strengthen your bones. You have to recover, then you start eating good food, getting your vitamin D and exercising. So after the good shoot, take a look. And orthotic, as I'm pushing down, it's not collapsing anymore. So that right there will help the tibialis anterior, which holds up the arch. Nothing's compressing on top here. You can still walk. It transfers the pressure from the middle of your foot to your big thick calf muscles, your hamstring, your thigh muscles. That's the muscles that should be getting overworked because they get stronger. You could also wear an ankle brace that could help. Cross training is big too. If you're a runner who runs five days a week or seven days a week, do some swimming, do some bike riding, lift some weights, all that stuff can help. And then you wanna do some stretching and exercising to get rid of that calf tightness. The people we see with knots on top of their foot who are young and healthy, their feet kinda of do this, which is called overpronation. It compresses the tops of your feet, the bones, the joints become swollen, the tendons have to work harder, this irritates the nerves, and then the laces crush on top. So as you get flexible and wear better shoes, look at the difference what happens here. These feet are more vertical, they're not buckling out as much. This is what happens with better orthotics, better shoes as you gradually get more flexible. The real key is to preventing new damage, not to finding the right pill or the right icing treatment. So this is an example right here, but look at my right foot has more flexibility than my left foot. See how my left foot's turning out? That extra twist out with my left foot compresses the nerves, compresses the joints, 
creates the fluid to herniate upwards. The muscles have to work even harder. Look at that's a 10 degree difference. So I would have to stretch my left calf, my left hamstring, my left knee. So that's what I do here. I do a warm up in the morning, one to two minutes. Just rotate your ankles when you get up. You know, if you're younger and healthier, you'd have to do less warming up. If you're older and stiffer, more warming up. And then use a towel to stretch. Or if you can touch your toes, use your hands. If you can use gravity, use gravity. But the massage roller stick, the foam rollers, all these things can help your stiff muscles loosen up in the morning, especially if you're a heavy duty worker or an athlete that can really help. And then you stretch, you know, 15 to 30 seconds at a time. I love using gravity. So see right there, you can bend at the knees slightly a little bit, stretch out your hamstrings, stretch out your calf muscles. Uh, there's a million different stretches to do. And there's a lot of great videos, including some of my own right here that help you stretch your calf muscle, your hamstring, your glutes. And this is an ankle slant board right here. You know, these things are like 50 bucks. I put them down in the show notes. They can be pretty effective for this reason. When you're drinking your coffee in the morning or brushing your teeth, that's when I like to do this. You put it on autopilot. You don't have to bend over quite like this. But as you're doing all this stuff or checking your phone messages in the morning, each week you gradually go up the levels and it stretches your calf muscles, the backs of your knees, your hamstrings without hurting anything. That can be really effective. And if you have flat foot pain, if this video helped you, click on the links, give us a comment, give us a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. So help out if you can. Thank you.